Hello, dear students. I hope that you're doing great. In this lecture video, we will go for a quick reminder about heat energy and magnets, and then we will start our new lesson. So first, what are different sources of heat energy you know? Sun, fire, stoves, ovens, and many more. Those sources of heat provide us with heat, and they actually convert three different types of energies into heat energy. They convert the chemical energy into heat energy. They also convert the mechanical energy uh, into heat energy and the electric energy into heat energy energy. It depends on the source we're talking about. The sun, for example, converts the chemical energy into heat energy. But when you rub your hands, you are actually turning the mechanical energy into heat energy. When you use an iron cloth or a kettle, for example, electric energy in here is being converted into heat energy. And heat moves. Heat flows from hot things to cold things. So it moves from hot objects to cold objects. And there are some materials that let heat pass through them faster than others. Good conductors of heat are those who let heat pass through them easily while insulators are bad conductors of heat. Some examples of conductors are metals like silver, gold, aluminum, um, iron, insulators like papers, wood, cotton, and much more. Does heat affect matter? Yes, we saw that when we heat gases, when we heat liquids, when we heat solids, they expand yes right they expand and sometimes the state of the matter changes like when we talk about water water exists in three states solid state which is the ice liquid states which is the liquid water we drink and water vapor which is the gas state of water so water vapor when when the ice turns, when the solid water turns into liquid water, so it is melting, this is the melting process. But when you place your liquid water in the freezer, it freezes and turns into solid water, which is ice. When you boil liquid water, it evaporates and turns into gas water or water vapor. Some of the conductors in here, some of the metals, um, can be attracted to magnets. Not all metals, some of metals are magnetic. So now we'll be talking about magnets. Magnets attract magnetic things, such as some kinds of metals, iron, for example, and it does not attract wood. Magnetic things are the objects that get attracted to magnets. So when you try to attract something with a magnet and it gets attracted, so it is a magnetic thing. Non-magnetic things don't get attracted by the magnet. So magnetic objects are being attracted by magnets, while non-magnetic things do not. Magnets exist in different shapes and forms. For example, we have bar magnets, ring magnets, horseshoe magnets, cylinder magnets, road magnets, disc magnets, and other shapes. Those magnets, when you place them next to each other, they attract or they repel. This depends on the poles you are placing next to each other. So when you place a south pole, for example, next to the north pole of another magnet, they attract since they are different poles. Different poles attract, while same poles, north and north, for example, south next to south, for example, those magnets repel. So different poles attract, same poles repel. Magnets work at distance. For example, when you place a magnet 
on one side of your hand and you place magnetic things on the other side, the magnet can still attract these paper clips, even if you place your hand between the magnetic thing and the magnet. Today's lesson is about something very different, which are the plants. Some examples of plants we know are the rose plant, the apple tree, um, the orange tree, the gardenia plant. Plants show three main parts, three main parts. The part hidden in the soil is called the roots. And this one, this line supporting the plant is its stem. And these green parts are the leaves. The roots help the plant to take water and minerals from the soil. The stem, as I just said, supports the plant and it holds the leaves. The leaves have an important role for the plant. They catch the sunlight, they take the sunlight needed for the plant's growth. Another example, trees are also plants, aren't they? Here are the roots of this plant. This is the stem of the tree, you are right. And the green parts in here are the leaves. Most of the time, plants show flowers. The strawberry plant, for example, is a flowering plant because it grows flowers. And then those flowers turn into fruits, which are the yummy strawberries. Other examples, let's see. This is a plant, which is the dot plant. The dot plant is a flower, is a is a plant that does not show flowers at all. So it has roots, stem, leaves, but no flowers. The fern plant is another example. The fern plant has roots, stem, and leaves, but no flowers. So again, the dot plant and the fern plant show roots, stem, and leaves, but they do not show flowers. On the other side, we have the broom plant, which is a flowering plant growing yellow flowers and the sunflowering plant or the sunflower plant grows flowered. Here is the tomato plant. Do you think it is a flowering plant or a non-flowering plant? What do you think? Here are the roots of the tomato plant. This is the stem of the tomato plant, and the green parts are the leaves. What about this yellow part? This is the flower. So the tomato plant is a flowering plant, while the dot plant and the fern plant, as we saw in the previous slide, are non-flowering plants. Why? Because they do not make flowers at all. So what are the four basic parts of a flowering plant? We're talking now about a flowering plant. It has a flower. Here we have the blue flower, the stem supporting the plant, the leaves that help the plant to take sunlight, and the roots hidden in the soil and that help the plant to take water and minerals from the soil. Okay, great. Flowering plants, or some examples of flowering plants are the rose plant, the apple tree, and as I told you, when the plant is a plant that grows fruits, their flowers or its flowers turn into fruits, like for example in the case of the apple trees. Apple trees make flowers, and then after a while those, those flowers become apples. Non-flowering plants are mosses, ferns, dot plants, so they have roots, stems, leaves, but no flowers, okay? Look at the leaves of the plants shown in front of you. Leaves actually are different. Look at them. The oak tree, the orange tree, and the apple tree grow what we call broad leaves. Why? Because their leaves are a kind of 
wide, big, so they have a certain surface. They are not like sharp or um, the very thin, no. Those are broad leaves, okay? So they are a little bit large, okay? And the other side, look at the leaves of the cedar tree, the pine tree, and the cactus. So these leaves, as you can see, they are too thin and they look like needles, right? We call them needle leaves. So plants grow different kinds of leaves. What are types of leaves that we just saw? Broad leaves, like for example, the leaves of the oak tree, the apple tree, the lemon tree, the orange tree, and others. And needle leaves, like the leaves of cedar, uh, pines, um, cacti, and also other examples of plants. Thank you for watching. If you still have any questions, I will be happy to answer them.